So, to understand the role of backstop, so basically we will now uh, examine role of backstop, role of backstop in the determination in the determination of the price path of the existing resource. Okay. Let us assume, let us assume, let us assume MCB is the marginal cost, marginal cost of extraction. marginal cost of extraction of the backstop backstop so in our previous discussion as an example of backstop we may say that solar energy is a backstop and obviously there would be a cost of extraction for solar energy also and what we assume that marginal cost of extraction and MCB is actually quite higher than MCE. So, that means what we are saying that marginal cost of extraction of the backstop is quite higher than the marginal cost of extraction for the existing non-renewable resources. So, marginal cost of extraction for coal or oil is much lower than marginal cost of extraction of solar energy. So, initial cost of extraction, mar initial marginal cost of extraction for the backstop is quite higher. But, but once but once the backstop is available, backstop is available, it is, it is not going to be exhausted so soon. So, once we know how to extract solar energy, so obviously it is quite reasonable to understand that solar energy is not going to be exhausted so soon like coal or oil. Okay? solar energy is not going to be exhausted so soon. So, if solar energy is not going to be exhausted so soon, what is the implication of this? If you compare the renewable energy with this backstop, what is the major difference between these two? See, in the case of non-renewable resources, we said that price should be equals to marginal cost of extraction plus an user cost. Why this is user cost? Because the there is a limited supply for these non-renewable resources. If we extract it, it today, same amount is not available tomorrow, right? Same amount is not available tomorrow. But that is not the case for the non-renewable uh, for the backstop. If you use the solar energy today, 
tomorrow also use you can use the same amount of solar energy it will not get exhausted so soon and implication is that price is only determined by its marginal cost of extraction there is no user cost because of this okay so the implication is there is there is no user cost for the backstop all right there is no user cost now let us assume that we will draw a simple diagram let us say that this is this is in y axis we are measuring price and in the x axis we are measuring time so this is basically marginal cost of extraction let us say for the ordinary uh, resources and for backstop what we are saying that as time increases so it is it is increasing the marginal cost of extraction up to some point but then after that it is flat it is not changing because you have adequate amount of supply right this particular point this particular point let us say this is capital T so this is basically p bar which is actually equals to mc b the marginal cost of extraction for the backstop technology okay backstop technology all right so we assume that t is the time capital t is the time time at which at which non renewable resource gets exhausted gets exhausted okay and once the stock of non renewable resource gets exhausted we will ship to the backstop that is the idea so t is also you can think of the shipped date okay shipped date so t is basically called shipped date okay shipped date so that means basically we are assuming suppose suppose at period t at period t at period t all the stock all the stock of non renewable resource gets exhausted and we shipped to backstop so that means what is happening here as time increases if you look at the behavior of the price price is also increasing at an increasing rate why because the stock of 
existing resource is getting exhausted slowly by slowly. But at time period t, after that you look at p is basically fixed. Why this is so? Because at this point which is basically called SIP date, we have now alternative resource which is called backstop. So that is why at this point the price is given by P bar, price is actually set by an upper limit P bar, okay, P bar. Now what we will do, assuming, assuming that at time period T also some amount of non-renewable resource available, we need to determine the price path of the existing non-renewable resource at time period capital T and that is basically given by Pt. If you look at Pt would become Mce plus P0 minus Mce into 1 plus R to the power T. Okay? So, this is basically price path of the existing resource, existing non-renewable resource at capital T. And this equation we are getting simply from our first rule of, if you go back, this is the equation P t equals to M c e plus P 0 minus M c e into 1 plus r to the power t. So, instead of t, we are putting capital T at that point, at that shift date when non renewable resource get exhausted. So, what would be the price uh, behavior at that point of time? So, put, just I am putting T equals to capital T, okay? T equals to capital T. Let us say this is equation 1, equation 1, okay? And at time period T, since non-renewable resource gets exhausted and we shift towards backstop, assuming P T is the price of the backstop, we can simply write P T equals to M C B, M C B, okay. So, P T is basically price of backstop and M C B is the marginal cost of extraction for the backstop. P T equals to M C B, this is let us say equation 2, where P T is price of the backstop. So, this is little conceptual. What I am saying at time period t first we are trying to understand what is the price path of the existing resource. So, this is coming from the first rule of optimal extraction P t equals to M c e plus P 0 minus M c e into 1 plus r to the power t. Second equation tells us that at time period t if we assume Pt is the price of the backstop, then that is simply determined by MCB since there is no user cost. There is no user cost for the backstop we have already defined earlier. That is why with MCB we are not adding anything, okay? We are not adding anything. Since equation 1 and 2 both are actually denoting the price behavior of the resource, we can actually equate equation 1 and 2, okay? Equation 1 and 2 and then what you can get from equation 1 and 2, we can say that, that MCB, MCB equals to, we can say that M C the marginal cost of extraction plus P 0 minus M C E into 1 plus R to the power T that is all. Okay? 
So, from here what we can say that uh, m c b minus m c e m c e uh, divided by 1 plus r to the power t equals to p 0 minus m c e ok m c e. So, that means from here what we can write p 0 basically equals to m c e plus m c b minus m c e divided by 1 plus r to the power t minus 0. I am just instead of t, I am putting t minus 0 to have a pattern. So, if that is the case, what would be p t? p t would become m c e plus m c b minus m c e into 1 plus r to the power capital T minus t okay, for all t less than capital T. Now, this equation is again very insightful and meaningful, right? This equation. What does this equation say? This equation is telling that look at this m c b is actually determining the price of the existing resource as time period t. So, that means from here what we can get two inside. First of all, m c b that means marginal marginal cost of extraction for the backstop which is m c b of the backstop which is m c b determines the determines uh, the price path determines the price path of the existing resource. What is the implication? That means, see here m c b minus m c e divided by 1 plus r to the power t minus t. So, this entire thing is basically is basically the user cost. Okay. So, in the determination of user cost, m c b is coming into the picture. So, that means, how easily or how, how easily m c b would be available in future that will actually determine the user cost and thereby the price path of the existing resource. If the backstop is very difficult to harvest, if the backstop is very difficult to harvest, so if from this equation you can understand if m c b is quite high then p t that means price of the existing resource at time period t will also become very high. If m c b is quite low that means we have compatible technology to harvest the backstop easily then marginal cost of extraction would be very low and p t will also become very low. So, whatever happens that means m c b is actually determining the price path of the existing resource at time period t. And secondly, secondly, MCB, MCB sets an upper limit upper 
upper limit on the price of the existing resource at time period t. These are the two things. Okay, these are the two things we have to keep in mind that even though even though the earlier equation shows that as t tends to infinite, price of the existing resource P t will also become infinite. It is not so, it is not going to be happen so because the demand condition and the demand condition is basically determined by the alternative resources that would be available after 200 years or alternative technology which will make the utilization of the existing resource more efficient. Now this equation from this equation what we basically did I will repeat once again these two equation equation 1 and 2 while equation 1 is basically determines the price path of the existing resource at time period capital T that means at shift date. Assuming the resource is still available, what is the price path? Okay? We assume that T is the shift date when existing resource will get exhausted and we will shift towards the backstop. How difficult it would be to shift towards the backstop will be captured by this marginal cost of extraction MCB. That is equation 1 and equation 2 it tells that what is the price of the backstop? Price of the backstop Pt equals to MCB. We are not adding anything here. No user cost. No user cost. As backstop is plentiful. Is plentiful. So, we are not adding any user cost here unlike the existing non-renewable resource. For existing non-renewable resource, the resource gets exhausted. So, today's utilization requires an user cost to be added, to be augmented, then only we will get the price. But here, you have to keep in mind that Pt equals to only MCB. So, that means we can understand that equation 1 and 2, they are actually equivalent. They are actually equivalent, both the things, both are denoting the price of the same resource. So, then only we are equating equation 1 and 2, okay, equation 1 and 2. And from there, by equating 1 and 2, we are getting this, P t equals to this at time period capital T, okay. That means, the marginal cost of extraction for the backstop MCB, this equation clearly shows, determines the price path of the existing resource at T. And MCB basically sets an upper limit on the price of the existing resource. That is also very true from here. These are the two insights that we can draw from this particular uh, equation. And the diagram I will just explain once again. In the x axis, we are measuring time, in the y axis, price. So, initially from 0 to t, you can understand the price is increasing at an increasing rate. This is price of the existing resource. Now, once the, the resource get exhausted at time period t, which is called shift date, I have mentioned, this is called shift date, backstop is available and then price becomes flat. Okay, then the price becomes flat. So, this is we can say that MCB. You can say that MCB is quite high, is quite higher than MCE because the difference is basically there is a huge difference between MCB and MCE, right. That is the assumption that marginal cost of extraction for the backstop is quite high, but once it is available, then 
it is not going to be exhausted so soon. Okay. So, this you can think of user cost MCE. So, this user cost we are thinking only for the existing resource. This is MCE, the marginal cost of extraction for the existing resource and this is P at time period T. So, you can say that this is the user cost. But for MCB, there is no user cost. P equals to MCB, right? And that is why P, we are putting the price of the backstop is P bar at that ship date. It is not changing. It is MCB puts an upper limit given by P bar. Okay. So, with this, we are just closing our discussion today. Basically, we have now explained role of backstop alternative resources to determine the price path of the existing resource and we have also learned how the backstop uh, technology or backstop resources, it puts an upper limit on the price of the existing resource even when it is getting exhausted at ship date. Thank you.